It's incredibly rare to see a fighting game to have such an influence on the fighting game community, much alone an entire continent. Hi, I'm Ginny and welcome to Fightzilla. The King of Fighters was a crossover game featuring characters that most people arguably didn't care about. It wasn't a crossover like X-Men vs Street Fighter or Smash Bros, but with Terry and a few other SNK characters. Not many people would have searched for a crossover between these characters. It was a poor man's Street Fighter and everybody knew that. But a bunch of rejects beating each other up made the game so awesome. Kyo Kusanagi, the main character, is also a reject. The dude dropped out of high school and has a nemesis who will do anything, including entering a fighting competition and battling through the most challenging and vital individuals in the tournament to kick your butt. Lori Yagami is the adversary who is prepared to accomplish all of that. Lori is a fan favorite who thoroughly deserves it. Sakurai, the creator of Smash, stated, Whoever created this character must be a genius. It also doesn't hurt that he looks so cool. When discussing the King of Fighters, these two characters will be the first to come to mind. The King of Fighters introduced a lot of fighting game cliches. Don't believe me? Let's go through the list. 3 on 3 team action, 4 buttons, rolling, female Ryu, French grappler that loves fashion, anime girls, and most importantly, new Ooh. protagonist that is hated. Despite being a pioneering game, King of Fighters isn't as famous as Street Fighter. This game wasn't in malls because most people preferred to play Street Fighter 2. That game was so popular that most people would choose to play Street Fighter 2 instead of Street Fighter 3. Why would players play the equivalent if they are hesitant to play the latest game in the series? Because it was affordable. In an era where piracy made it impossible to sell new arcade games in China, Central America, and South America, SNK created the Neo Geo. The Neo Geo allows arcade operators to combine up to six games into a single cabinet, which helps operators with limited floor space. With this sensation, SNK could sell many games in pirate-heavy locations. What was the point in buying the bootleg when you could add five more dollars to get the real deal? SNK knew this, which is why you started to see characters from these countries. Xion, Ramon, Tizak, and Angel. SNK would show up in these countries and announce new details about their upcoming games. SNK was the underdog of fighting games. But once they stopped producing games yearly, it eventually became worth it to bootleg it. Once this happened, a domino effect for SNK started to happen. SNK faced bankruptcy, debt, and failed pachinko machines. SNK was in jeopardy and it appeared that the King of Fighters phenomenon had finally burned out. With the gaming market shifting away from fighting games, how did SNK make a comeback? The reason why King of Fighters never vanished into obscurity is due to one factor, community. It would have perished and become outdated if SNK had not marketed to China, Central America, and South America. However, because SNK was wise enough to establish relationships with these nations, diehard fans hosted tournaments for these titles. That's why the King of Fighters will never die, since the desire for it will always exist. Well, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you had any fun experience with the King of Fighters. Thanks for watching!